Today is National uh, National, Anthem. National Anthem Day. So we're going to all stand uh, and sing the Star Spangled Banner. 310. Thank 
Somebody came in and they have a birthday. Somebody had a birthday this week. Come on, Lana, stand up. All right, here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. God's blessings on you. God's blessings on you. God's blessings on you. God's blessings on you. Congratulations. Now we'll get back on schedule and go to one of Lead me to Calvary. This is really the off to a hymn. this uh, offertory to, for the uh, expenses of the church, Lord, that you we just give back just a portion of what you so richly bless us with. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.
worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. Sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before you, let me be singing when the evening. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship Your holy name. Rich in love and slow to reign. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness, I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship the holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. anyone else have a special this morning hallelujah all right i just thought i'd ask all right if you have your brochures with you i want to just open it up to the very first page and we have a little segment for today uh based on uh, the north american mission board's efforts to bring forth to light the circumstances of our north american region there is 371 million people in North America. That includes Canada, United States, and Mexico. There is a multitude of people 
There's 350 languages that are to be spoken. In Mexico alone, there's over 280 dialects of Spanish or Aztec language. And of course, in Canada, uh, we have a, a multitude of conversations that speak French, Canadian, and uh, even Eskimo language. It's diversity. But in the United States, we have the world centered into a multitude of cultures and languages. And amongst all those numbers, only 281 million of those people are without the hope of the gospel. There is a difference, if you do the math, of 371 million minus the 281. It's almost close to 90 million people that have only come to know the gospel. There is a difference, which means we have a long ways, not even a third of the way of getting the word out there. But through our efforts, through the North American Mission Board and the contributions <laughs> and the prayer and the mission opportunities that we have, we can go into the mission field and touch the lives of many or pray for many or even give towards many. But we have a challenge before us. As you know, one of the biggest issues in this political year is that we have an influx of immigrants entering the country. Many of them are trying to do legal, but others are not doing it right. But yet, what do we do even then when they've crossed over? What can we do to bring forth to light the gospel of the Lord? So we are challenged in many different ways. But we as Christians must push forward and try to lead the lost to Christ. If you agree, say amen. Amen. And so it gives us this understanding that when Jesus spoke the words for his disciples or his apostles to go and preach the gospel, he was serious about preaching the gospel because it's the only way that the world will come to know who Jesus is. And he said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Depending on your translation, it might say to the whole world. But it is the essence of Jesus telling us, the Holy Spirit leading us and God the Father commanding us to continue the work. And so therefore we have a great challenge in our life. In day one, we have the impact of the loss. There's three individuals, one by the name of Ronnie, the other one's Elizabeth and Maggie. Ronnie came to America with his worldly possessions to fit it into one small carry-on. And he says he left everything in Venezuela. Elizabeth, which just had had her third abortion, she felt like she had hit rock bottom and felt disgusting, and she was so alone. And then Mackie, well, Mackie had made a, made a big professional fighter, and he let his life become his mantra. God will never love a per person, he said, like me. And the such, in perhaps what is most, uh, in the most technology advanced and seemingly gospel-saturated continent in the earth, how is it that there are hundreds of millions of people just like that? And how is it that this community is all over North America, Jesus is not known? You would think and you would you pursue that all of these people know who the Lord is. But yet, Ronnie didn't speak English. Elizabeth had no Christian friends. And Matthew wholeheartedly embraced the worldviews of what God is. Ronnie, Elizabeth, and Mackie are North America's modern day every man and every woman. And because they are among us, North American missionaries are called to go to them and make Jesus known. So, when you pray, pray God to call out more laborers who are willing to make Jesus known everywhere in North America, churches to develop a passion for missions in the heart of the people to pray and go. Can you say amen? Amen. And every believer in North America to see their neighborhood as a mission field. And those are the things that we can pray for in the day like today. 
And I'll keep on sending you some inside. If you want to, you can block me, but I'll send it anyway. And uh, when you're blocking, you might have an unraveling amount of text. But I just want to send you throughout the course of the week a little uh, daily update of what you pray for. And may the Lord bless this efforts. We do have a church goal of $300 in the name of the Lord. We'll collect it at the end of the month. And in the first of week of April, we'll send it off in Jesus' name. We have also the opportunity to be on that mission field, which is why in the month of June, we'll be out there in the first two weeks in Palacios, Texas, in San Diego, Texas, trying to reach the hearts of the multitude. In uh, Palacios, there is a great large community uh, known as Vietnamese that are shrimpers. And uh, mainly they attend the Catholic Church, but the Lord will put them in our path in that opportunity and for us to speak to them the gospel of Jesus Christ. In San Diego, Texas and in Alice, Texas, where we'll be going the week after that, we'll have a number of people that speak Spanish and English and others that, uh, that speak it very fluently but don't understand what the gospel is. You're talking about a community that's impacted by influences of drug and political chaos. But we have the opportunity to go and do missions in the name of the Lord. It's one thing to be mission-minded, but it's another thing to have a mission mindset. And that's what Jesus had. He had a, a mindset of missions, going everywhere, changing and touching the lives of people. And so this morning, I want to challenge you as you open your Bibles to the Gospel of John in the 10th chapter. And we look at verses 20 through 30 and then 40 through 42. And I had prepared my message once again to be bilingual, but I'll for now stay with the English unless the audience changes. If you have it, say amen. John chapter 10, verse 22 through 30. While you're looking for it, congratulations to Landon. He is officially a teenager. How about that? Praise <laughs> the Lord. All this time, wanting to be in part of the youth, and, and now he's there. So life has caught up with him. Before you know it, Landon, you'll be over 21, wanting to reverse the clock. But it'll be all right. It's all okay. If you haven't, say Amen. amen. Now it was the Feast of Dedication in Jerusalem as it was winter and Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then the Jews surrounded him and said to him, how long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. And Jesus answered them, I told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my father's name, they bear witness of me, but you do not believe because you are not of my sheep, as I said to you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them them out of my father's hand my father are one can you say amen? amen now jump down a little bit further down to verse 40 to 42 and he went away again beyond the jordan to the place where john was baptizing as first at first and there he stayed then many came to him and said john signed but all the things that john spoke about this man were true and many believed in him there. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, bless your word today and help us to understand the truths that lie within it, but also what you can provide as our assurance of our faith that if we turn to you wholeheartedly, believing in your message, that we can have the assurances that we need in life no matter what comes along the way, that we can stand strong with you and you with us, as you are one with the Father, that we too can be one with you in glory and here in this world. Father, bless uh, the birthdays and 
Bless those who are for beautiful uh, baby shower. Take care of them, Father God. Uh, bless those, Father God, who are looking for a bridal shower. And, and bless those, Father God, who are sick, who could not come today. We pray for your blessing to be upon all of these. But Father, more importantly, bless those who have some doubts in their lives, in their faith. For it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Jesus had declared himself to be the good shepherd. And he laid a distinction within the context of the first verses, of verses 1 through uh, 21, that Jesus is one who cares for his sheep. And he also put out that the, the hirelings and, and the devil himself don't care about the sheep. All they want to do is still kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And even when he told them all of these things, they still want Jesus to tell them plainly in their way. And I don't know how plain you can get when he's telling I am the good shepherd. I am the I am. I am the door. I am the resurrection. I am truth. I am the light. And he's told them all of these things and they still ask him, why don't you just tell us plainly whether you are the price or not? And sometimes we speak the truth, but they ain't listening. And I believe that the Lord is trying to tell us something today that will confirm those doubts or those doubters that might have that need to be spoken clearly to, that they may be able to move forward in faith or just decide that's as far as I'm going. But Jesus didn't want to robbed them from the opportunity, gave them every opportunity, and even then they still did not believe. So what does the text contain for us? And as a title's message is this, and perhaps that's a giveaway. The Good Shepherd's Assurance. Can you say amen? The Good Shepherd's apostrophe, Assurance. Las aseguranzas del buen pastor. And so such is what the Word of God contains. So in order for us to understand those assurances, we have to find out or validate whether what Jesus is stating to them is enough for us to be persuaded to move forward with him. And so what are those things? Well, I want to mention five of those things, and I will not keep you that long, trust me. But Jesus is clear already. But maybe if I just share them and bring them up to your understanding, that you'll be able to comprehend them a little bit better. The first thing that Jesus, the good shepherd, provides as his assurance to his sheep is this, that the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Can you say amen? amen. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness of me. So their question is, are you the Christ? Well, he's been doing everything like in this context of the gospel of John so far we've seen that there was one that was paralyzed and he got up and walked can you say amen? amen there was another that was blind who could not see from birth and Jesus put a mud pack on his eyes say go wash yourself and he went and washed and then he could see can you say amen? amen and before he did any of these miracles he also filled up six big jars and he converted water into wine, to wine. And who could do such a thing? Who could set the captives free? Who could remove demons from those that were possessed? And Jesus has performed all these miracles and wonders. And they still ask, are you the Christ? They even went as far as to verse 21 and said that this one does the works of the devil. But... Common sense was mentioned and says, well, does the devil ever open the blind eyes? Because I've never heard of the devil right. opening blind eyes. And the only one that does those things is God. Amen. So Jesus is stating the assurance that of who he is, that they've overlooked or just don't care, is this, that the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. So, you know, we see television programs, and there's two great magicians. And amongst, amongst them, they do what they, they call uh, 
elevation and they do other things that put themselves into high dangers, high risk. It's all magic. But people buy into it and they believe that it's true. We'll believe the lie before we believe the truth, let me tell you. Jesus is the light of the world. But the world rejected him because they loved darkness more than they did the light, according to Gospel of John in chapter 1. And to his own he came, but his own received him not. But to those that believed in his name, he gave them the right to be called children of God. Can you say amen? Amen. So they want to know whether Jesus is a Christ or not. And Jesus has already told them, the works that I do in my father's name, they bear witness of me. So you decide whether I am or not. I was seeing this morning in uh, uh, one of the TV programs that I like to see before I come to church, and, and they were asking Nikki Haley some questions. They say, does that mean that you will support Trump if he if he's becomes the candidate for this? And she never gave an answer. But she led it to her imagination, whether she would or she wouldn't, you know. And so the truth is that they'll do what they need to do to move forward. But sometimes people badger on things, whether uh, they know the truth or they just want to conspire some things. And I think that's the case for this Jews that approach Jesus. They want to conspire. They don't want to know the truth because the truth has already been told. And sometimes we know that Jesus is the Christ, but we don't want to accept that Jesus is Christ because we don't want to accept it just yet. But the works that I do in my father's name, they bear witness of me. Can you say amen? Amen. I remember being in school, and I'll move on after this, and, and they, they gave us the opportunity to pass the world geography test. And then we passed it just by simply answering the questions and the amount of certain points that we would then be exempt from the final exam. And I said, oh, great, I'll study. And I studied the one that had the major points. And sure enough, I took the test with everybody. Nobody had the answer, but I raised my hand. I did the appropriate thing. And then I stood up and I gave the answer and I sat down. We were tied. It was the valedictorian and myself. And so they said, well, two of you will be exempt. But somebody said, no, he cheated. Because I was the one that sat in the very far back of the room and the chalkboard was like this and I could still see it back then. <laughs> but I was paying attention. So they said, okay. So they let the valedictorian pass and they said, well, you have to take it again. Sure. Ask the questions again. And so they shuffled everything and then they asked all the, the other questions and I went ahead and answered them once again. But this time, I didn't just answer the ones that had the most points. I said, keep them coming. Ask me all you got. And so the teacher was able to see my eye, eye to eye, Miss Samora Lopez, and then uh, she went ahead and, and asked me the question. And I answered and I answered and I answered. And I said, all right, get out of here. You're exempt. So I had to prove my point. But there were those doubters. And I hope that you're not a doubter this morning. That Jesus is telling you that he is speaking to you clearly. But whether you want to believe it is up to you. Because the works that he did in his father's name. Bear witness of him. Number two, hallelujah, my sheep hear my voice. This is the assurance that Jesus is telling us. That there are many sheep. There are sheep and there are goats. Remember the context. Always refer to the context. There are sheep and there are goats. And there are those that are going to be on the right and those that are going to be on the left. But if you want to find out which ones are mine, my sheep hear my voice. Can you say amen? amen? Jesus doesn't have a doubt who his sheep are. I think the bigger doubt are those that are trying to, to find out whether they hear his voice or not. And so Jesus lets them know that this assurance, this assurance that Jesus provides is to give that certainty of hope and faith along the sheep of those that have believed in him that they will hear his voice and they are tethered to his voice because there are many who would call and speak and come before Jesus got there and thought that they were 
the principle. They were the people to go to. And there were the Pharisees and there were the Sadducees and there were the Jews that had their own laws. But they never did anything to change the outcome of the people that had need. But yet Jesus has come in the demonstration and the power of the Lord to change the outcome of life. And therefore he can clearly say beyond a shadow of a doubt that his sheep will hear his name. The blind man was questioned a number of times and he asked him, who did this to you? And he said, I don't know who he was, but I was blind and I could see. Then they asked him again, well, who, how did he do this? I don't know, but I know that his name was Jesus and I was blind that I could see. They approached him again and they said, and, and that's where they interrogated his fathers that they came to him. Why is it that you don't understand that I've already told you? That Jesus has done these things. And then when he encountered Jesus. He came to believe. And from that moment forward. He worshiped the Lord. When Jesus does something wonderful. In your life. When he takes away the burden of sin. When he takes away uh, the, the flaws of life. Just like for these three individuals. That we mentioned. That had left everything. Or had gone through abortion. Or lived a lie. But even then Jesus loved them also. When you feel that you've been forgiven and redeemed, when you've been replenished and restored, when you had nothing and now you're living in the abundance of God's mercy and grace, there is something that resonates in the heart of those that have the redeemed. And they know when Jesus is calling and because they hear his voice, they respond to what do you want of me, Lord? Saul of Tarsus. Persecuted the Christians, women and children and men without regard. But one day on the road to Damascus, Jesus uh, confronted his issue and a light shone from above. And he fell down, it says there. And then he spoke the words, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And, and Saul said, Lord, who are you? I am you who you persecute. And Jesus revealed himself. And from that time forward, when Jesus spoke, Paul, Saul of Tarsus, was able to hear the voice of the good shepherd. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. I hear a lot of things when I'm asleep, and I'm sure you do too. But sometimes you hear something so clearly that you wake up and think, what? And there's nobody there. I believe the Lord is calling. And it might not be a mistake. The Lord spoke to Samuel and Samuel thought it was a bad dream. And then Eli said, go back to bed. Right. And the third time now Eli no understood. Here's what's going to happen. And the third time, if you see this again, tell him, here I am, Lord. What do you want of me? And lo and behold, it wasn't in his mind. It was the Lord speaking to him because his sheep hear his voice. Can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Here's something about those sheep that hear his voice. He says, I know them. Interesting to say, a few years ago, Brother Peyton was graduating in Lulin uh, Independent School District, and I was there with the families that were present. And there was a lot of students. Surprisingly, there in Luling, there's a lot of students. And they all had the same uniform, yellow cap and white shirts and, and so on and so forth. But it seems like every parent, despite of the crowd, despite of the number, they could find who their son or daughters or granddaughters or grandchildren were. And I believe the Lord sees from above and sees who his children are, who his sheep are. God doesn't lose sight. He's, he's got 2020 to those that are his. But here's another thing interesting about those sheep that hear his voice. They follow me, he said. Can you say amen? Amen. They follow me. Rather than go into something else or someone else, they are faithful. Now, we have a number of church members in this church. Not always are they here, but once in a while they'll show up because they know that this is their place. This is where the Lord has them. 
they hear his voice, but they also follow him because coming to church is a way where we can learn how to follow the Lord in our life. Whether they're out there or in here, the Lord guides their life. The Lord should be guiding our lives as well. Here's a third thing I share with you this morning that provides the assurance that the good shepherd alone can give. And this is this, I give them eternal life. Can you say amen? I give them eternal life. So Jesus is able to state to those who did not want to believe, those that are asking, tell us plainly, when he telling them, I, I don't know how personal you can get when they start saying I, is as clear as I can get. Can you say amen? And when I say I, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the words that Jesus used. Jesus saying to those doubters, to those who lacked conviction, to those who really just wanted to ridicule, to those that were there for the wrong reasons. Those are the ones that found out that Jesus said to them, I give them eternal life. This is the difference between Jesus and the Pharisees that were amongst them. That Jesus didn't give, uh, 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 and the Pharisees did not give them anything. If anything, they took away from them. Hello? And history has shown us one of the world's biggest cathedrals in St. Petersburg, I believe it's called. It's a big, big, beautiful, very expensive, the most elegant sanctuary in the world. But you know how it came to pass? They took the money from the indigents and the land those that had nothing, they took away the nothing of them and they built their sanctuary. They've taken away from Martin Luther's re, uh, rebuttal was that why do we have to give to you when the one we should be given is to Jesus? And he even stated in the 92 thesis that he put on the door, 95, I believe. And he said, because they were saying, you need, you're not going to get to heaven until you pray, uh, pay your doctrine of indulgence. And that means that you have to pay for those that you've lost. And if you want to get them closer to heaven, this is what's going to cost you. And they paid some more and they gave their land all for those loved ones that they lost. But Jesus says, I give them eternal life. Can you say amen? amen. They had to pay the price. But Jesus says, you don't have to pay me nothing. I'll pay the price for you. Amen. I'll redeem you. Amen. I'll give you Amen. eternal life. Amen. And I believe without the shadow of doubt that what Jesus is declaring is the greatest assurance that he can give anyone, including doubters, that be believe what the world wants to believe. But if you believe in his words, then you can have eternal life. And Jesus will give it to you. Amen. Give the Lord a round of applause. Amen. When he gives them eternal life, they shall never perish, he states. Not only that, but he says, no one can snatch them out of my hand. Right. And I've done that with my children. Take that away when they were smaller. Of course, now they're bigger. I won't even ask them. <laughs> but I say, if you take this coin out of my hand, this dollar bill is yours. I said, okay. And they would go and try to twist a finger. They move a finger, but the rest of them are still clawed. I wasn't going to let them win. Well, of course, if they do it now, well, they'd probably find a different way to do it. Like a hammer. Ouch! <laughs> but I won't ask. But Jesus is demonstrating not only his authority to give life, but his power. That no one can snatch them out of his hands. Can you say amen? All right. Number four. Here's the fourth assurance that Jesus provides. My father who has given them, and he says them, meaning his chief. My father has given them to me is greater than all. So if you don't want to believe me, then believe my father. That he, he who has given to me, 
these things is greater than all. So you can plan to take them away, but you ain't getting nowhere. Listen, draw a target in your own mind, okay? On the outside of that target is the Holy Spirit. Then there's another bullseye there, and, the, and that target is called Jesus. And then way in, in, in the inside and the center of that is God the Father. Can you say amen? Amen. You'll have to go through the Holy Spirit. You'll have to go through Jesus instead of God. You'll have to go through God the Father to take one of God's lambs away. And to do that, it will be the impossibility. Because no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hands. Even if Jesus is acknowledging, even when I have my last breath here on earth, that you might think I'm dead, my Father still has my sheep holding hands. Can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a beautiful thing to go shopping and go to the markets and flea markets and wherever we go as a family, we try to hold on to our children and the children won't let you go when they see all those people. Because they hold on to your hand because they feel that they have the assurance and as long as you're holding them, they're okay. And the moment you start taking a step, they want to reach back to your hand because they want to stay close to you. Well, that's what it is with Jesus. Once you come to know his love, his compassion, his mercy, his power, his authority, there's no pulling away. And when God the Father has his hand on you, well, you got the greatest assurance in life. Can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. It used to be a, com a commercial that says, A.G. Gibraltar. You got a piece of the rock, right? There's another commercial that says, you're in good hands. Amen. Well, they all promise something, but there's nothing like the hand of God. Amen. He created all Amen. things and Amen. spoke Amen. them into Amen. existence. Amen. And that's the greatest assurance in life. Number, uh, uh, oh, let me see, uh, in closing, it says, no one will be able to snatch him out of his hand, and I and the Father are one. Can you say amen? amen. I and the Father are one. Nobody can take him out of that. We are one. So we're in sync. We're, we're connected. We're together. And we can join them as one. Hallelujah. And number five, Hallelujah. That's when all the church said, Amen. <laughs> the fifth assurance that the scripture provides about the good shepherd. And this is it. All the things that John spoke about Jesus were true. Can you say amen? Amen. Now the Bible has a law that they knew better one of those laws is that they need to bear witness and the testimony of two or three were necessary to validate them to be truth. But not only has Jesus declared that I and the Father are one, now you have two, and here's the third one, the author. That the things that John wrote about this man are true. And that's the reason the Gospel of John became the canonized, the inspirational passages that were put together in what we call the Bible. Can you say amen? Amen. Because they were considered to be truthfully inspired by God in the hearts of men. There were people that witnessed these things and they saw these things. But here was the evidence. Not only is there three, but it closes off. In the lower verses, that he went away from there, went to the Jordan in the place that they were baptizing at first, and there he stayed, and there came to him. And after what John said was true, he says, Many believed in him there. Can you say amen? Amen. So, how can you deny not only the witness of three, but of the many that came to witness the power, the authority, the presence, the miracle, the wonder? Of who Jesus is. is Tell us plainly. Are you the Christ? Well I've shared with you five. Assurances that we can find. When Jesus declares himself to be the good shepherd. That the works that I do in my father's name. Bear witness of me. My sheep hear my voice. I give them eternal life. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. And all the things that John spoke about Jesus were true and many believed.
Church, I share with you this five truth for a reason. That whatever doubts you might have in your life, that you can put those things away. Because there is no greater truth that you will find than what the scripture tells us about Jesus. And I pray that this morning, whatever doubt you might have had about being committed to Jesus, because remember, his sheep hear his voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Are you the sheep of the Lord? You know, by the wonder of God, and this is how the Lord works. Sister Jackie read a verse in the opening passages of this service. All we are like sheep, each one gone astray in his own way without a shepherd. And this is the outcome of what the scripture tells us why Jesus came into this world. To provide the sheep the assurances that they need to believe in him. Would you bow your heads? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would manifest everything that you put forth in your word today in the hearts of those that are listening today to this message. Whether it be here in this building or those that are listening through this uh, social media application. If there be any doubt, Father God, I pray that you have already removed it. And as I make this invitation, Father, I pray that they would surrender to you. That from this day forward, they would be committed to listen to your voice. Not to listen to intuition, not to listen, to, Father God, to their influences, or not to listen to what the popular thing is, but to listen to your voice. Touch them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Let them feel the warmth and the love, the healing, the forgiveness, the power of your mind. That from this day forward, they would believe beyond a shadow of doubt that you are the good shepherd. And the good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. Not only that. But you give yourself that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. Touch every heart. Now, Lord, I extend this invitation in your name. That they too can be one with you. If there's anyone here today that has not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and been baptized by believers' baptism, I ask you today, would you commit your life to the Lord and be his sheep today if that is your desire? <coughs> right there where you're at, would you just lift up your hand real, real quick like If that is your desire, would you lift it up real quick like in Jesus' name? Is there anybody? Anyone? Hallelujah. All right. Father, I thank you. You've spoken to them. There's no need to prolong it. You're as clear as day. Now I thank you for your love and for your mercy. Let your joy continue in their lives. That their joy for you may abound with great joy. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Praise be the Lord, church. May the Lord bless you. We'll see you tonight at 6 p.m. Don't forget, sign up for our mission trip. If you're interested in going, uh, please sign up in the back. We have a need for Easter eggs, candies, candies, not eggs, uh, to fill for the end of the month. And likewise, there are some other activities taking place during the week. Be a part of it and be proud of your church in Jesus' name. God bless you and praise the Lord. Hallelujah.